I'm Old Big Glenn. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, happy Saturday. Let's do a little quick investment uh, uh, blog here. You know, I've mentioned it a few times. You guys are, I know a lot of you guys are following me on Twitter. I'm not super active on Twitter. I probably tweet out two, three, four things a week. And keep in mind, I don't engage on Twitter. I get so many people that will send me at me on Twitter for questions and private messages. I, I don't get back to you. Don't take it personally. I just do not engage on Twitter. Uh, I'll tweet out some things. I use it myself. I follow about 125 people. I spend maybe 10 minutes in the morning when I'm having my coffee on Twitter uh, because there's some great stuff on there for sure. But I'm not one to go back and forth on Twitter. I just don't have the time for it. I know some people love to spend, some people must spend hours on Twitter going back and forth. I just don't have the time for it. But if you follow me on Twitter, I do put out some gems there every week. I'll put out some graphs on investing in real estate, in investing in the stock market. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll uh, put out there, you know, books that I'm reading, uh, stocks that I have my eye on or added to my portfolio. I'm not recommending you follow me and buy the same stuff I'm buying, but I'm just putting it out there. Um, uh, you know, retweeting some stuff from some of the private equity and, and uh, guys that I follow. So I think some pretty decent stuff I, I tweet out, some motivational stuff as well. So check me out on Twitter if you aren't already. But I tweeted some stuff out a couple weeks ago on you know, I've often said to you guys here, you know, I have no idea what the market's going to do in the short term. Anybody that does is just taking a guess at it. They're letting their egos do the talking. Instead, anyone that's experienced, who's been in the market, both real estate or the stock market as an investor, as long as I have, go the Warren Buffett approach. Uh, one of the greatest investors of all time, he doesn't get into short term predictions either because he doesn't know. There's just too many variables. You know, the Vancouver real estate market could go up 10% this year, it could go down 10, who knows? But over the long term, uh, you know, it's gonna go up just like the S&P 500 and the TSX. And that's why if you go back into my blogs over the last 10 years, you know, I think pretty much everything I put out there is aged very well because I'm always putting stuff out with a long-term horizon. I play it safe. You know, the ones that put these predictions out there, you know, Two things, I guess, let's take a guy like little Evan Sindal there, who in 2020 at the height of COVID predicted the real estate markets uh, were gonna go down, dead wrong. There are only two reasons for it. It's inexperience, guys that don't you know, really know, haven't been in the markets very long, and Evan hasn't, or it's an ego thing. Hey, maybe I'll get it right, broken clock, and I'll look like a, a, a hero. Don't play that game, as I've, <laughs> I've said many times. Instead, like I was tweeting out, I tweeted out these stats here from a, a private equity guy who posted some stuff on the S&P 500 over the last 80 years, since 1936, and play the averages. And the averages are, is that for most years, the S&P 500 and the TSX and the NASDAQ are going to go up. Same thing in Vancouver real estate. Most years, it's going to be a good year the market, the value of your condo or your studio or your duplex or your detached home is going to go up. Uh, so let me give you the numbers here. Uh, this guy broke it down from 1936 in the S&P 500. So since 1936, uh, the S&P 500 has averaged 12.5% annually. 12.5%, that's incredible. That means you're basically doubling your money about every six years or so. You got a million dollar portfolio today, it'll double in six years. Up years since then, 66 years have been up, 20 years have been down. So a little over three to one. And that's about right, it's the same in Vancouver real estate. For every 10 years in Vancouver real estate, and I've been at this for, as an investor, I've been in the markets for 35 years in Vancouver. For every 10 years, seven are probably gonna be up, two are gonna be down, one might stay flat, and that's, just the way it is. Over time, it's up. In the short term, you'll have a couple of good years, flat, maybe a down year. But 70% of the time, probably your, your holdings are going to be up. The average uh, up year was 20%. The average down year was 12%. Since 1980, we're going to move it up here. Since 1980, the average return is 13.6%. 35 up years, 7 down years. Uh, average up year was 19%. Since 2003 in the S&P 500, uh, the average return is 12.8. So it's holding pretty much the exact same, just over 12%. 
uh, up years 17, down years 2. So there's been 17 year up years since 19, uh, 2003, only two years where the S&P 500 was down. Since 2009, the average return is 16.6. It's been a gravy train the last 12 years if you've been a stock investor, even though you know we had a pretty vicious pullback in 2000, dropped about 35% in a matter of about a month and a half. But if you held, held firm uh, or even bought some shares in the spring of 2000, uh, in the spring of 2020, you're probably up you know, well in excess of 20 or 25% since then, average. But uh, since uh, 2009, we've had 12 up years in the S&P 500 and only one year where it was down. So just play the law of averages. Buy and hold the index. Buy and hold some good quality stocks if you're so inclined and want to do the research on it. Collect the dividends if they pay a dividend and just keep reinvesting and then call it a day. Let the averages do the heavy lifting for you. There will be some down years in there and some flat years. But overall, the, the law of averages are going to be heavily in your favor. Geez, if, if this was Vegas odds, if the casinos had these odds, I mean, they make an incredible amount of money when the odds are in their favor by about 53%. Just 3% over 50-50. These are in your favor by 70%. Final thing I'll just leave you with quickly here. My, I get a bunch of these year-end letters from some of these private equity guys. I'm fortunate to have some guys in New York that kind of send me some of these equity email uh, or uh, emails that get sent to them. A lot of these are close-ended funds, uh, what we call home offices that they'll write. They're not even accessible to a guy like me. But they'll do these kind of year-end wrap-ups that they'll send to their clients. I'll just read this one quickly to you here. For, for New Year's resolutions 2022, this guy called it. And this is a very high-level uh, private equity guy. Um, the rules of, of the New Year's resolutions for 2022. I will always keep in mind that the day-to-day -day performance of the stock market is due to factors such as growth, value, momentum, defensive, uh, dividends, etc. But what matters over the long run is the earnings and free cash that your companies generate, the quality of the businesses, the valuation you pay, and your expe expectations for future returns. Two, I will not beat myself up over short-term underperformance or missing out on the hottest stock. All investors make mistakes. Uh, you learn from those mistakes, and you shouldn't lose sight of what you're trying to achieve. So for me, that's just long-term steady growth. Uh, and, and capital appreciation. I remember that I am a long-term investor, not a speculator. A long-term investor doesn't buy stocks, they own companies. Uh, a long-term investor doesn't bet on what he or she thinks the market is likely to do in the short term. Instead, a long-term investor bets on a good company staying good as long as the company has the key elements in place for success. So think Apple, think Amazon, think Google, think Meta, think J&J, &J, think the Canadian banks, Visa, Costco, Home Depot, McDonald's, buy the S&P 500, buy the Triple Q, buy the VIG. Just hang on to it, sit on your hands. Um, I will make sure to keep the right temperament, to not sell winners, to buy underperformers. That's a common mistake people do. You know, there's that old saying, nobody got hurt by taking a profit. Well. Let your winners run. You know, I have never sold a share of Apple. I'm up probably 1,500% on my early shares of Apple. One of these days, I'm going to have to trim. It's becoming a very overweighted position in my portfolio. Not because I've been buying more. I haven't bought much more Apple in the last couple of years. It's just because it's gone up so much that it's making up a, a much bigger proportion of my portfolio. Let your winners run. Most people, they sell their winners to buy a loser. Uh, Peter Lynch talks a lot about that as well. Um, finally, you know, I will stay optimistic. Uh, had I told you at the beginning of 2021 that interest rates would go up, inflation would rise to levels not seen in decades, the pandemic would intensify, we would have a supply chain nightmare, the labor shortages. Uh, you may have never believed in the North American stock market. As a matter of fact, there was all those pundits in the early 21 and even in 2020, sell your stocks, it's doom and gloom. Bloomberg was on that, BNN, they all were because fear sells. You would have gotten out of stocks, yet we just had another incredible year in the averages. TSX up 25%, S&P. I've got stocks, many stocks up for 2021, over 100% return. 
not selling anything. I let them ride because they're good companies. Good companies keep winning. That's the thing you need to realize. Now, if McDonald's said one day, hey, we're going to get out of the hamburger business and get out of the real estate business, because they're really in the real estate business as well, and we're going to sell toys or we're going to get into the software business, I'll sell all my shares. But they're not going to do that. They are a, a, a cash flow machine. Johnson & Johnson, all these companies are. Just buy and hold them and you're going to do incredibly well. So keep it simple. Like I've always said here, don't try and overcomplicate things. Tune out all these pessimistic losers that are out there. Because and I know I'm being blunt with that, but they are. Anybody that's trying to tell you what the market's going to do this year or next year or the next six months and the interest rates and the economy to try and spook you, there's no reason for you to sell your portfolio, any of your holdings, and any of your real estate. Uh, unless you have to. If you want to retire and you need the money and you want to downsize and all that other stuff, fine. But don't let these pessimists and market timers and doom and gloomers ever influence you in any way. They don't with me. If you're holding the right companies and the right real estate, you're good. I'm Old Big Len. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all my new subscribers. Also, thanks for everyone that's been buying my book lately. I've had a nice surge in book sales lately on Amazon. I don't know. I mentioned my book a couple of times and it usually surges my prices or my sales. But I'll see you next week.